Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm really excited to film this video today. It's all about my undergrad experience as a speech language pathology major. So a lot of people have been requesting this video from me, so I'm really happy to film this one. So just a quick little recap of where I went to school for my undergrad journey. So I went to Malloy College. It's a very small, quaint little college. It was a really good experience for me. Um, I really liked it there. And I majored in speech language pathology from the start. So I applied to Malloy as a speech and language pathology major. So I got accepted right into the program. And then it was a four year program. And then I finished with my bachelor's in speech and language pathology. Fortunately, I was lucky enough where I was, I found this major while applying to school. So I was lucky where I just was able to apply straight into the major and finish in four years with my bachelor's. Just a quick little recap of Malloy. It was a very small school, so all of my speech and language classes had about 13 people in them. So we had really small class sizes. It was a very close-knit program, and I was with the same girls in the program um, for the whole time, for like the four years of the program, and like I said, there was only about 13 of us. So. Um, it was very interactive, a lot of presentations, and you got really close with the people in the program. And overall, I really loved Malloy. I loved all the professors. I loved the speech and language program. I really feel like I got a great experience there, and I learned a lot, and it really prepared me for graduate school, which is where I am right now. And if you guys stick around till the end of the video, I'm going to go over like some tips and tricks I have for studying and keeping up your GPA, because I know that it's really stressful and there's so much pressure in undergrad to get like a 4.0 so you can get into grad school. It's so stressful so I I know I've, I was there and it sucks. Um, so I will definitely include some tips and tricks that I, that worked for me because I actually was able to finish with a 3.9 GPA and that's, I'm not saying that to like brag or anything but honestly I think that if you just like study and do your best you could finish with a good GPA. So in my freshman year, I actually only took general education classes. That's how Malloy did it. So my freshman year was pretty easy. The gen ed classes, you know, were pretty easy. I had no complaints there. Um, so yeah, I don't really have much to say about my freshman year. So then we move on to my sophomore year, which is when I started taking speech and language courses. And I was so scared, I remember, because I was like, oh my god, what if I don't like it? And like, what if I have to switch my major? And like, I was really nervous that I wasn't going to like it. I was also really nervous that the class or the coursework would be too difficult and I would fail or I would be so bad. Like, I just didn't believe in myself. I didn't have confidence. I did start taking the speech classes and my first semester the three speech classes I started with were anatomy and physiology of the speech mechanism, um, phonetics, great class, and I actually don't remember the name of this class. It was like a prereq for audiology where like you learned about the inner ear, the middle ear, the outer ear, you learned about like frequency and intensity and like basically like the ear and like all of that kind of stuff, but I really loved all of them so much. Um, Anatomy was definitely a lot of studying and all I could say for anatomy is just study because basically anatomy and physiology is a lot of just like knowing this knowing like the parts and like memorizing basically I studied my ass off for every quiz and every test I probably overstudied like I could recite everything like word for word which I don't know if I recommend that but basically that class I really loved and I didn't find it too difficult I just put you just have to put effort into it like I said phonetics I also really loved that one wasn't as much like studying it was more like knowing the IPA and like learning all the different sounds and the IP and and the IPA symbols and it was actually a lot of fun like I thoroughly enjoyed my phonetics class and I really loved my professor for that class as well the third class that I forgot the name um, I also really enjoyed that class and um, yeah, I really liked all those three classes. They were like the intro level classes, so none of them were too difficult in my opinion and, or in my experience. I didn't find them to be terribly difficult, but you did have to, of course, 
try and put and study and all of that so in the spring semester of my sophomore year I took audiology and I took language acquisition so audiology I actually found a little bit difficult for me it was just a lot of a lot more like technical um, and science kind of things and yeah it was just a little bit hard but I don't want to scare anyone it wasn't like terribly hard or anything like once again um, it was just for me harder than I found the other classes um, and I also don't love audiology like some people who go and major in communication disorders they go on to be audiologists so I'm sure they like that course but for me I knew I wanted to be a speech and language pathologist so it wasn't my favorite course and then I also took language ac and of course I love language acquisition I love language that course I from what I remember had a lot more um, like assignments like I remember we had to do a language sample where it's basically you find like a child um, I used my little brother because he was young enough and you basically record them in a play kind of interaction and then you transcribe it not phonetically but you like there's like instructions on how to transcribe the language sample and then you kind of analyze it for all different parts of language I'm not going to get into it because I'm not sure um, if you're not in um, school yet you won't really know what I'm talking about so it was definitely a little bit more hands-on than maybe some of the other courses but once again I really did enjoy it so I took three courses in the fall semester I took speech disorders one I took oral rehabilitation and I took speech science so I really liked oral rehabilitation it's um, basically learning about um, the hearing impaired deaf culture and how you could best um, help these individuals we learned about cochlear implants so it was a really interesting class and I really did enjoy it like I feel like I'm saying the same thing I really liked it but like I really found most of my classes really enjoyable I didn't find them to be that hard other than just putting in the effort but I will say one class that I found really hard <laughs> and this is speech science <laughs> I honestly I kind of blocked it out from my memory it was once again it wasn't that bad but once again it was very kind of like science like I don't know like the terms used but it was a lot of like technical things and science and then my professor ended up having a baby so then we got a new professor and like it was kind of just like a little bit um all over the place so that class was definitely probably one of the most difficult classes I would say and then I had speech disorders which speech disorders one and honestly guys I don't remember this class <laughs> like I remember we learned about like articulation and phonology and maybe cleft palate um, like I think we learned more childhood disorders and speech disorders one like child and language and articulation but I really don't remember it, but it wasn't hard. Um, I found it like a good class. I just don't really remember it. So <laughs> now moving on to my junior year spring semester. So this is when we, we took a clinical experiences class. So this was basically the class where you obtain your 25 hours of observation. So I did half of my hours at um, a preschool and then I did half the other half of my hours at a nursing home and it was both they were both really cool experiences it was really cool to see like the different ends of the spectrum like preschool and a school and then like working with older populations in a nursing home it was really cool to experience that at Malloy they assigned you one placement like they they gave you one and then you had to go out and find the other one I will say that trying to find a placement was a little bit challenging like I called up a few um, places and a lot of them said they only accepted graduate students and of course I was an undergrad so it took me a little bit to find a placement um, that was just my experience but I of course I eventually found one thank God and um, I was able to get all my hours and then basically we had that class once a week and in that class we would talk about 
um, our experiences at our observation hours and we kind of learned more about like treatment and like goal writing and how to write a lesson plan and things like that. So it was a really good class and I feel like I really learned how to like write professionally or write clinically because writing clinically is a lot different than writing academically. It's a lot more to the point, a lot less wordy, and you have to use like professional terminology. And I feel like that class really um, helped me so much and I feel like it really helped prepare me for graduate school. Then we took an evaluation and treatment course. So we learned basically about how to evaluate individuals with speech and language disorders and, and different treatment interventions. So once again, this was a really um, great class. It was kind of like an intro class. Like we kind of, we just scratched the surface with a lot of the interventions and treatments. We didn't go like super, super in depth, but that's to be expected because it's on the undergrad level and in grad school is where you really get more in depth with all of those things. But yeah, I really liked this class. This one was also, I would say this one was more difficult than the other ones because um, it was a lot of, I think I remember we had a lot more like papers and presentations. I know we had like one big paper, we had like maybe two presentations, like oral presentations. Um, so that was a little nerve-wracking because I don't like um, <laughs> presenting. I get really nervous. But um, other than that, it was, once again, it was a good class. We also had speech disorders too. So in speech disorders too, this is where we learned all about adult speech and language disorders. So we learned about aphasia, dysarthria, Parkinson's, ALS, MS, uh, probably some more things that I'm forgetting. I remember we learned about like dysarthria and there was like, there's like seven, dif there was seven different types and I was so confused and it was like a lot, but then in, like I learned about it again in grad school. Like I actually just took my um, class on dysarthria and it just all made so much more sense. So if you're finding like it overwhelming in undergrad to learn about all the different like speech disorders and all the different kinds, just to know that it will probably end up making sense more in graduate school when you have more hands-on experience and you go more in depth, it just makes a lot more sense. Oh my god, I can't believe I gra graduated um, like over, it was like a year ago now, it's so weird. Um, but yeah, so my senior year, I really loved my senior year of undergrad so much. For the fall semester, I took a research class. This class is a year long. I took clinic, which I'll explain, and then I took a psycholinguistics class. So first I'll just talk about the psycholinguistics class because that was just a normal class. It's where you learn about literacy and reading and um, decoding and basically about like dyslexia and language learning disorders and things like that. And then we took clinic. In my program, as a senior, they at Malloy they gave you the option to actually have your own clients and treat your own clients. I know that most undergrad programs don't have this. I was really lucky that I did go to an undergrad program that had this option. So basically in order to be able to participate in this clinic you had to um, fill out an application and you had to have a certain GPA. I honestly don't remember what the GPA was. It might have been a 3.0, um, but I could be wrong, but you had to have a certain GPA and you just had to fill out like an application where it asked you some short answer questions. So once you got approved, you got your own client. So in the fall semester, you only got one client just because it's really overwhelming. And basically it's like you're in grad school. Um, so I got my I got one client and I had a treatment session with this client for an hour every week and I planned all the sessions. I wrote lesson plans, soap notes. Um, I would of course have a supervisor who would supervise me. At Malloy they do it through like a video camera. So there's a camera in the treatment room and they're like in the back and they watch you over the camera. It sounds scary and it was very scary at first, but you honestly forget that you're being watched because you're so in the moment with your client and it really helps you um, build your confidence and obviously learn the more clinical and hands-on side of 
this field. We also had a research class. So we had a year-long research class where we had to um, conduct our own research basically and it was really, once again, really overwhelming at first. Um, so we had to come up with a research question, a hypothesis, methods, the results, and then the discussion. So it was literally like a research, a whole research project where you had to find participants and then actually carry out the research that you wanted to do. And then you had to find the results and you had to write them all out. And then we had a huge presentation at the end of the year in April of all of our research. And it was, once again, it was stressful. And like in the moment and like throughout the year, I was definitely like really stressed and it was definitely hard finding participants for my study. Um, but in the end, like, it was worth it. And yeah, and then in my last semester of my undergrad, I only had clinic and research. So like I said, clinic, I had one client in the fall semester, and then in the spring semester, I got two new clients. It was scary at first, like everything is. It's scary at first, and you, you think that you can't do it, but then you do it and you feel so much better for it and I loved all my clients and I'm so glad that I got the experience to um, help treat them and then I had my research class and this is where we finished up our research um, I think this is when we actually did the methods like we carried out the study did the procedure and then um, calculated all the results and then presented overall I will say that I had a really good undergraduate experience um, with really great professors, with good classmates, and I feel like I learned a lot and I also really enjoyed all the coursework, but I will say that it was really stressful, really stressful, and I want to like make sure that I get that point across because I don't want it to sound like I just had like some great experience and like it was so easy and I got into grad school and like no. There was definitely so many hard moments I remember there was like one point in my junior year where I feel like I got like a bad grade on a test, probably like a B because when you're an undergrad, like I said, you feel like you have to get all A's or you're a failure. Um, I think I had gotten like not the best grade and I think I had read online somewhere like how hard it is to get into grad school for speech pathology and blah 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 and I just literally like had a breakdown I was like this is gonna be all for nothing like I'm not gonna get into grad school these four years are gonna be a waste and I'm not gonna get in anywhere and then I'm gonna like have to change my my major again and like I just felt so defeated and like I just wasn't going to succeed or get into into graduate school I had so many moments like that in undergrad and I put a lot of pressure on myself to be perfect and I feel like it's like kind of a stereotype that SLPs or SLP majors are like type A and they're perfectionists and unfortunately I do fit that stereotype where I really am like a perfectionist and I put a lot of external pressure on myself to get good grades and to succeed um, and it was def it was stressful. So now for some tips and tricks. I don't have like any specific rule book for like studying, but what I can say is study. Like you need to put in the effort. Like just if you have tests, you've, if you have quizzes, just make sure you study the material. And I don't mean just like read through it and kind of like half know it but half don't know it, like, I mean, like, you really have to know it because that will ensure that you will get, like, a good grade, most likely. So, like, don't, like, you really have to study and know the material and learn the material. And also, don't save studying for the last minute, please. Like, I would never save it for, like, the day before. I would always like split it up. So say I had like three PowerPoints I had to study for my exam. I would study like one on Friday, one on Saturday, and then the last one on Sunday, and then my test would be Monday. So like just like split up studying and don't save it all for the last minute. And I have the same thing to say about um, assignments and papers and presentations. Don't save them all for like the day or two days before. 
if you know you have an assignment due, and you most likely will because it'll be on the syllabus when you get it in the beginning of the semester, if you know you have an assignment due, start working on it like at least like two to three weeks before it's due. So like maybe spend like a few days researching it, finding some articles, and then say you have like a 10 page paper due, once you research it and find some articles, do like two to three pages a day. And this way, you don't have to write 10 pages in a day. You write like two a day and it takes you five days and then you're all done and it never feels stressful. And that's what I did. I would always break up my assignments, my papers, my presentations where I wouldn't have to sit down and do it all in one sitting because you just get burnt out and it's not going to be your best work. So that's definitely like my biggest advice is to study, know the material, try your best on all your assignments and presentations and not save um not shape not save shit for the last minute. Um also planner, a planner helped me so much. Um I'm sure most of you already use a planner and everything. It's not like some crazy tip, but definitely a planner and I would plan out all of my assignments, all of my tests, when I was going to study, and that helped me tremendously. I just wanted to say that in order to like do well in undergrad and to get into grad school, you don't have to be um, some crazy overachiever who's like volunteering and doing all these things all the time. Like that was not me. I am a pretty quiet and introverted person. Like I did not really participate in class. I didn't really raise my hand too often. I would occasionally, but I was never like the person to always be participating. Um, I wouldn't, I didn't have too close of a relationship with any of my professors, like I went to class and I did my work and I took notes and I mean that was really it. As far as like extracurriculars, I was in Nisha, I was in an honor society and I did have like clinic and research from my undergrad program that I like was required to do but I did also put that on my resume. Um, but other than that, I really didn't do any other extracurriculars. Just do your best, show up to class, and uh, this is something I also wanted to say, is that with like, for the tips, um, just go to class and like take good notes and focus on learning the material while you're in class. Like don't be going on your phone or online, or online shopping. <laughs> well there's a lecture going on like really try to be present while you're in class and be like really into learning the material so that it's kind of in your brain already if you're currently in an undergrad program and you're really stressed and you're struggling just know that it'll all be worth it and one day you'll be looking back and you'll be so happy of, about all the hard work and effort that you put in I know it's hard because other people like in, un in other undergrad programs like they don't they don't always understand because they don't need to get like perfect grades as long as like they do what they have to do and get decent grades like it's okay but in this major you really do feel like you have to get perfect grades so it, it kind of can feel lonely and isolating if all of your friends like don't understand what you're going through so trust me I know it's hard but you can do it and it'll all be so worth it so thank you so much for watching this video Bye, guys.